hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel okay so in this video lecture we'll be discussing about telecommunication traffic and today we'll be discussing about the topic queuing systems so in the queuing systems we have three more sub topics to be discussed the first one is very important one the second are long distribution so if you have a system with n number of trunks to so that system if you give a a erlang of traffic then what is the probability of encountering delay is given by erlang and in this system uh, the system is shown over here in the figure over here in the figure 4.9 we have a system over here we have n servers or trunks and incoming traffic is a erlangs and this traffic is passed through a queue okay now so Erlang solution depends on the following assumption. So Erlang has given the solution and it, the solution is depending on the following assumptions. The assumptions are the first one pure chance traffic. The next one is statistical equilibrium. Next is full availability. And fourth one is calls which encounter congestion enter a queue and are stored until the server becomes free. Okay. So such a system sometimes known as m bar m bar n system okay so the first three assumptions made over here are common to the theory of lost call systems as well and however the system assumption 2 implies that the traffic offered a is less than or equal to number of trunks n okay and if traffic offered is greater than n that is number of trunks then calls entering the system are at a greater rate than they leave. Okay. As a result, length of the queue must be continuously increased towards infinity or statistical equilibrium. The meaning is the number of incoming calls and number of outgoing calls should be same. If the number of calls are more compared to the number of servers, the, there is equil equilibrium is not maintained. That is what he's trying to say. Now let us analyze further. So let X be the total number of calls in the system that are arriving to the system. Uh, when X is less than N, okay, when number of calls is less than the number of trunks, then X calls are being served and there is no delay. Okay, if the number of calls entering the system is less than number of trunks, then obviously whatever the X number of calls are coming in, all will be connected to the destination so hence he is saying that there is no delay the problem comes when x is greater than n when all the servers are busy and the incoming calls encounter delay let us say for example if you have 100 trunks uh, for carrying the call and the incoming calls are 150 now we have more than the number of trunks we have so 100 calls are being connected there's no doubt in that what about the 50 calls they encounter a delay okay they are made to wait in a queue okay so there are n calls being served okay and x minus n calls will be waiting in a queue fine now let us analyze it further if x is less than or equal to n then there is no queue so is not required only that is if number of calls that are entering the system are less than the number of servers then Q is not at all required and the behavior of a system is same as that of a lost call system in the absence of congestion okay so now uh, we have seen the equation 4.7 so that it is saying that e of x is equal to a to the power of x divided by x factorial multiplied by p of 0 where x is ranging between 0 to n okay this is the condition without without the congestion happening now if x is greater than or equal to n then the probability of a call arrival in a very short period of time that is delta t from equation 4.2 that we discussed earlier is given by probability of call arrival that is p of a is equal to a delta t by h where h is the mean service at time okay thus the probability of transition from x minus 1 to x calls okay we are considering transition from x minus 1 to x calls in the system during the small duration of time delta t is given by probability of transition from x minus 1 
2x is equal to probability of x minus 1 multiplied by a delta t by h. Since all the servers are busy, only n calls are being served and can terminate. Therefore, the equation 4.3 that we discussed in the earlier uh, video is saying that probability of call ending that is p of e is equal to n into delta t by h. n is the number of servers that we have and delta t by h is the small duration of time that we are considering for the analysis and the probability of transition from x to x minus 1 calls okay earlier we have considered x minus 1 to x now we are considering x to x minus 1 so that is probability of uh, x to x minus 1 is equal to probability of x into probability of e and probability of e is nothing but n into delta t by h let us replace this probability of e by n into delta t by h now for maintaining statistical equilibrium we should have a condition that probability of x minus 1 to x is equal to probability of x to x minus 1 okay now let us substitute these values over here that is x to x minus 1 and x uh, x minus 1 to x in this equation that we have p of x is equal to n delta t by h is equal to probability of x minus 1 into a delta t by h from the this particular equation and from this particular equation i'm substituting over here now if you solve for p of x then you'll be having uh, uh, sorry and uh, we take p of x is equal to you'll be having a by n into probability of x minus 1 okay now if you want to have probability of n the number of uh, servers then p of n is equal to a to the power of n divided by n factorial multiplied by probability of 0 if you take p of n plus 1 then we can write uh, a by n uh, multiplied by probability of n which can be further written as e to the power of n plus 1 divided by n into n factorial multiplied by p of 0. Similarly for p of n plus 1 is equal to we have a divided by n probability of n plus 1 which is nothing but e to the power of n plus 2 divided by n square into n factorial multiplied by p of 0 and this continues. Now if in general in general for x greater than or equal to n, the above equations are written in general format. That is, probability of x is equal to a to the power of x divided by n to the power of x minus n multiplied by n factorial multiplied by probability of 0, which can further be written as n to the power of n divided by n factorial multiplied by a by n to the power x free of 0. Whatever equations we had over here these equations we are try, trying to write in the generalized format and we have obtained this generalized format this is called as 4.11 if there is no limit to the possible length of q okay if whatever q we have there is no limit for that then x can have any value between 0 to infinity that is x is ranging from 0 to infinity so p of x is equal to 1 so probability is maximum is one right hundred percent that is what now thus from equation 4.7 and 4.11 we can write what is saying is 4.7 let us go back and the c 4.7 this is our equation 4.7 p of x is equal to a to the power of x divided by x factorial p of zero this is 4.7 and 4.11 is this equation okay that you are seeing on the screen now let us uh, using these two equations let us try to equation uh, try to write the equation for our one divided by probability of zero which is equal to see x is ranging from zero to n minus one in equation 4.7 that is a to the power of x divided by x factorial plus then <coughs> in this equation we have n to the power of n divided by n factorial a by n to the power of n we are taking in this case and summation is ranging from 0 to infinity and uh, summation is uh, taken for a divided by n to the power of a okay now what is trying to do is from both the equations he has taken p naught and he has sent it to other side and uh, he has simplified this equation further okay where k is ranging from x minus n okay k is equal to x minus n since a by n is too much less than or equal to 1 then what i can say is 
summation from k equal to 0 to infinity a by n to the power k is equal to 1 minus a by n to the power minus 1. Now if you substitute this in the above equation, if you substitute this in this above equation, we have the simplified format as 1 by p of 0 is equal to the first term remains as it is and what we have is a to the power of n divided by n factorial. See, if I take this n inside a to the power of n divided by n to the power of n, it will become n to the power of n and n to the power of n will cancel with each other. So, we will be remaining with a to the power of n divided by n factorial. That is what is being written over here multiplied by this summation and this is nothing but this equation. Right? Let us replace this, this equation by this. That is 1 minus a by n to the power of minus 1. If you further simplify that, then you'll be having the equation p of 0 is equal to n into a to the power of n divided by n factorial multiplied by n minus 1 plus of summation from 0 to n minus 1 a to the power of x divided by x uh, factorial inverse. Okay, thus p of x is given by equation 4.7 or 4.1 depending on the condition given over here is x is less than or equal to n or x is greater than or equal to n. If x is less than n, then we'll be using 4.7. If x is greater than n, then we'll be using equation 4.11, where p of 0 is given by the above equation, that is 4.13. This is the second Erlanger distribution. Okay, thank you.